In this program, we want to help others around the world know or learn more about the Iglesia de Cristo, the Church of Christ. So before we continue with our discussion, we invite you to watch this video. After 160 years of Sunday Masses, the bells at St. Mary's Church will never ring again. In Another local church is closing its doors for good. News headlines like these are more common than ever. The Catholic Church in the U.S. is set to close soon. But the Church of Christ is garnering a different type of headline. Recently, the Church of Christ has purchased several properties and dedicated new houses of worship to God all over the world. We don't practice tithing, we don't join business ventures, and we don't rely on bank loans. We do, however, follow the biblical command about Christian giving, because in the Church of Christ, the Bible is the true basis of our faith, and the Bible inspires us to place importance on humanity. Members of a church in Fremont provided a variety of free services to their community today. The church held a Neighborhood Appreciation Day. It offers everything from clothing giveaways to medical screenings. The effort today was part of a nationwide program to help families during challenging economic times. The Church of Christ, this particular church, when you guys came in, we loved it. It was it empowered a lot of people here and brought about a lot of joy and, and gratefulness. Having a group like yours come in and make a donation to my community, it could help somebody someday to see God's love. It's just overwhelmed my heart, the, the amount of people that are willing to come in and, and to, to help with not, not, knowing, not knowing the people here, but just knowing that they're God's children. It's fantastic. I mean, this is, this, is, this is what it's all about. I mean, it's a great feeling. It's a warm feeling to have people come out and, and like I said, donate their time, their effort to, uh, to clean up uh, such a problem. We believe in reaching out to our fellow men through our outreach programs in various parts of the world, like the INC Giving Project and the International Aid for Humanity Program. It's an effort not only recognized by the very individuals it serves, but has even set world records in the process. While almost all Christian professing religions have started from the West and made their way to the East, the Iglesia Ni Cristo is different. It began in a developing country and progressed to the West, with over 5,000 congregations worldwide in nearly 100 countries and territories. We believe that all the victories and triumphs of the Iglesia Ni Cristo can only be attributed to one thing: that the hand of God is in all of this. What else do we believe in? Find out now. All right, brothers, we watched a wonderful video uh, for the brethren who are in the church and even for our friends who are not yet inside the church that really helps everyone to have a broader understanding about the Iglesia de Cristo or the Church of Christ. Now, brothers, here's a question. What is the first thing, maybe Brother uh, Bernard, we could go with you first, what is the first thing you tell someone who doesn't really know anything about the Iglesia de Cristo? Well, Brother Johnny, as the video pointed out, the world is experiencing what is called a religious recession, maybe even, as some may say, a religious depression, because we can see that churches are closing down, the membership in other religious religions are dwindling. However, as we talk to and tell people about the Iglesia de Cristo or the Church of Christ, we can see that trend going in another direction. Success after success, victory after victory, and once again, we do not take any of the glory or credit for ourselves. 
but we firmly believe that God is the one granting all of these successes and victories to the Church of Christ. Brother Philip, I have a question for you. Um, mm -hmm. You know what's been taking place there in uh, your part of the world? Uh, we can see what's been happening in the news. But when people learn about the Iglesia de Cristo, the Church of Christ, uh, for the first time, they've learned about it. Uh, what reactions have you seen from our friends who've come to discover the Iglesia de Cristo, the Church of Christ? Well, um, they're surprised on the uh, number of houses of worship we have, the number of uh, local congregations we have throughout the country, and also the number of brethren we have when, when they do come to attend a, a worship service. They'll come in there expecting to see maybe 10, 20 people, one or two rows, but they see these houses of worship filled with people. And not just only old people, as you see in many churches here, but, uh, you know, alive with youth, you know, who are, uh, you know, uh, dedicated in, in, uh, in serving our Almighty God. And that's something very rare, especially here in the United Kingdom. Brother Rod, uh, for those who live there in, uh, in, the can in Canada, in your area, uh, what would you like to say to someone who would be interested in religion, but really doesn't know anything about the Iglesia de Cristo? I would say go to the Iglesia de Cristo website, which I'm sure Brother Johnny knows by heart and can announce to you after I'm finished speaking. Find out the nearest congregation to you and go there. Because just like our brothers mentioned, people are surprised when they meet the church for the first time. They, a lot of them just have no idea of what to expect. But of all those things that surprise people, the most surprising to the most of the people that I have met is how the church asks the question and reads the answer from the Holy Bible. Question, answer. That is the most impressive thing that most of the people see with regards to the beloved Iglesia Ni Cristo. Now, dear viewers, regarding the websites of the Iglesia Ni Cristo, you can check out iglesianicristo.net or incmedia.org. You can learn many things about the Church of Christ or the Iglesia Ni Cristo. Now, in the first part of this program, uh, we learn from the Bible. You know, Brother Rod made a very interesting point. We simply ask the question, let the Bible give the answer. And we learn from the Bible that the ones whom Christ knows as His sheep are the members of the Church of Christ, who are the ones who obeyed His teaching to come into the fold through Him. In the first century, Christ's sheep were the members of the first century Church of Christ. But that church fell into apostasy and did not remain as an organization that belonged to the Lord. Though that happened to the first century Church of Christ, Brother Rod, here's the question we'd like to ask. Does that mean that no one else is recognized by Christ as His sheep, as belonging to Him? Again, Brother Johnny, allow me to read to you the answer to that question from the Holy Scriptures here in the book of John, chapter 10. This time, verse 16. And other sheep I have, which are not of this fold. Them also I must bring, and they will hear my voice. And there will be one flock and one shepherd. Though the first century Church of Christ was apostatized, does that mean that no one else is recognized by Christ as his sheep? as belonging to Him? No, it does not. Why are we sure? Let us examine closely what this verse says. The one who is speaking here is none other again than our Lord Jesus Christ. What does Christ make mention of? He said, this fold. What does He refer to by the words, this fold? to the church that he built or founded during his time on earth or the first century of the Christian era, which he called, based on Matthew 16, 18, my church, and which the apostles called the church of Christ. 
based again on the Holy Scriptures, Acts 20, 28, especially from the Lambs, a translation of the Bible. The members of the church were recognized by Christ as his sheep then. There's a very important part of that prophetic pronouncement of our Lord Jesus Christ, because the Lord Jesus said, and other sheep I have, which are not of this fold. So what does that statement prove? It proves that besides the flock, or besides the church of Christ in the first century, there are other sheep that also belong to our Lord Jesus Christ. He also recognizes them as His. So, if one would be counted among the other sheep, then we are counted among the people who belong to our Lord Jesus Christ. He refers to, it, to them as His other sheep, but yet they are still His. So, obviously, the question here is, who are the other sheep who belong to our Lord Jesus Christ? But before we get to that, Brother Philip, here's the question. Why are the ones whom Christ prophesied about in John 10, 16, why are they called by Him as His other sheep? Why are they other sheep? Well, brother, we can get the answer from uh, Romans 9, 24. This will make it clearer for for all of us. We are the ones God has called. We don't come only from the Jews, but we also come from the Gentiles. So your question was, why does Christ call, uh, why does Christ call the ones whom he prophesied, prophesied about in John 10, 16, his other sheep? Because they didn't belong to those who were called to be his sheep during Christ's time and the time of the apostles. The other sheep of our Lord Jesus Christ are not the sheep during the time of the Church of Christ in the first century. So then who were the ones who were called to be the sheep of our Lord Jesus Christ during that time? The apostles clearly state, we are the ones whom God has called. We don't come only from the Jews, but we also come from the Gentiles. Therefore, it is the Jews and the Gentiles who became members of the church that the Lord Jesus Christ built in Jerusalem in the first century who were the sheep of our Lord Jesus Christ during that time. The members of the Church of Christ were the sheep of Christ then, but the other sheep of Christ are not from the Jews or the Gentiles who are non-Jews, who lived during the time of the first century of the Christian era. Brother Bernard, what is the proof that these other sheep of Christ are not contemporaries of the sheep that Christ had during the first century of the Christian era? What's the proof that the other sheep of Christ are from a different place and time? Well, for that answer, once again, we will turn to the Bible, to a verse that we have read previously. Let's go back and read again what is recorded in the book of John 10 and verse 16. I have other sheep too. They are not in this flock here. I must lead them also. They will listen to my voice. In the future, there will be one flock and one shepherd. The first thing we want to point out is that we read again the prophetic pronouncement of our Lord Jesus Christ as recorded in the book of John 10, 16. This prophecy is regarding the other sheep of our Lord Jesus Christ. What is the proof that these other sheep are not the contemporaries of the sheep that belong to Christ during the first century of the Christian era. The proof is our Lord Jesus Christ said, I have other sheep too. They are not in this flock here. Therefore, the other sheep are not included in the first century Church of Christ. So what is the proof that these other sheep of our Lord Jesus Christ are from a different time? The Bible is clear. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, I have other sheep too. And in the future, there will be one flock and one shepherd. So, Brother Bernard, what you're saying is that the other sheep of our Lord Jesus Christ didn't belong to the same time and place of the Jews and the Gentiles who were already called into the Church of Christ during the time of the first century. They would come from a different time and place. But in spite of that, they are still Christ's sheep, although they would come from a different time and place. They are still the Church of Christ. Well, Brother Rod, from where and when would the other sheep of Christ emerge? Uh, allow me to read to you again, Brother Johnny, to answer that question, as we always ask the question. 
and read the answer from the scripture here in the book of Acts chapter 2 verse 39 and I quote for it was to you that the gift was promised to you and your children and to all those in distant times and places whom the Lord our God calls to him what we have just read is a statement made by the apostles based on what the apostles said here what we can learn about the church that was built by Christ the church that he built is composed of three groups of people why are we sure about this because the apostles said the promise is to you the first group and to your children the second group and to all those in distant times and places the third group who is the first group based on what we read earlier in Romans 9 24 they are the Jews who were members of the first century Church of Christ and who is the second group they are the Gentiles who were also members of the first century Church of Christ they were the sheep of Christ there and then what about the third group who are they they are the ones referred to as all those in distant times and places whom the Lord our God calls to him this third group these are the other sheep of Christ but brother Rod where would these other sheep of our Lord Jesus Christ this third group emerge from according to the teaching of the Apostles they would come from or emerge from distant places and when would the other sheep or this third group emerge or appear according to the Apostles once again the Lord God will call them at diff distant times which was reinforced by the prophecy of our Lord Jesus Christ when he said in the future there will be one flock well dear friends who are the ones referred to in the prophecy in the Bible as the other sheep of Christ who would be called in the future at distant times and at distant places that's what we'll talk about next after the break stay with us the Iglesia de Cristo International Edition will continue 